So, as we know, we have been able to flatten our curve and restart much of our economy, see our friends again, and we're now in that balancing of opening up our society, opening up our economy. But not everybody is weathering this storm well. Today, the BC Coroner Service released their illicit drug report for June. And as was the case in the previous month, we have had a tragic record number of people who have died from the toxic drug supply that we are facing here in British Columbia. 175 of our brothers and sisters, our family, our friends, our community members died in the month of June. This is a tragedy for all of us, especially for the families and the friends and the communities of these people. And this ongoing crisis reminds us that we need to put as much time and effort and kindness and compassion into caring for people who use drugs as we do, um, as we have been successful in doing in responding to the COVID-19 crises. As we know, these are mostly young men. About 80% of people who died were may, may, men between the ages of 19 and 49. Two thirds of people died in their own home. And we know from the conversations we've had with family, with friends, that most of their family and friends did not know that they were using drugs, and many of them died alone. We need to reach out to our family and friends. We know that the, the pandemic has meant that we have less access to some of the important things that were making a difference in saving lives from the toxic drug supply that we've had. We know that overdose prevention sites have been less accessible, that those supports that people have had in the community have been less accessible, and those things that we have had to help keep us safe have not always been there. We need people to reach out. Reach out to your family, reach out to your friends, reach out to your colleagues, the people you work with. Make sure they know it's okay to talk about this with you. If you need help, knowing how to have those hard conversations, you can go to things like Stop Overdose BC. There is um, information there that we can share with each other about how to have those conversations to support people who know um, that right now are at great risk. So get the training you need. We also need to make sure that we are supporting our communities by getting access to pharmaceutical alternatives to the toxic street drug supply. The coroner's report shows us once again that the toxicity of the drugs on our streets right now is through the roof. We are seeing very high levels of, of fentanyl and carfentanyl and other contaminants, in not only in um, the opioids on our street, but also in stimulants, in methamphetamine, and other drugs. Nobody is safe right now. We need people, we need clinicians to take the training we need to support people who use drugs to access pharmaceutical alternatives. We need to think about um, the evidence-based system of care. We need to be able to connect with people and bring them in to those services that are still available for them. We know that safer supply, hydromorphone, diacetylmorphine, is not what is killing people in our streets right now and in their homes right now. It is the toxic street drug supply. I also know that there, there is many complexities to what has gone into the overdose crises, and we were doing okay addressing many of those. One of them, which I will still uh, call for, and which recently the, the Chiefs of Police of Canada have called for as well, is reducing the stigma for people who are at home who are using drugs. And that is by, by making decriminalizing people who use drugs, who have possession small amounts for their own use. And I am calling again on the federal government to take this to heart. To, to take the advice of the Chiefs of Police who know that this is an important step that we can move forward on together and there is no more important time for us to do that than now when we are seeing this not only here in BC but across the country. We have also put out um, how we can do that here in BC and I am continuing to push for that as well. 
Finally, I think it's very important for us to be kind to people who use drugs, to escape that the pain that they live with, and to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to connect. Because we know that connection is what helps people um, get on their own personal journey of recovery. For those who are using drugs right now, don't use alone. Buddy up. Use the app. Have naloxone available. Call 911 if you're with somebody who's overdosing. Have your drugs checked. This is a very dangerous time for people who use drugs, and we need to be here to support you. There are still harm reduction services available. We know that we can support you, but you need to reach out as well. And we need to not assume that our friends are okay. We need to reach out and have those conversations. So as we have for the COVID crises, and now um, more than ever, we need to show kindness and compassion to our neighbours, our friends and our loved ones. These challenges we are facing are not forever, but they are going to last for some time. So we need to help each other out. We need to care and support each other through this pandemic and through both our crises. And we need to continue to do what we have been doing, to be kind, to be calm, and to be safe.